Joining us now is Joe Sid. He's the chairman and CEO of Thor Equities. They manage a global real estate portfolio of some $20 billion, and that does include data centers as well. Joe, nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, I feel like a lot of my, the executives we talk to and or investors in real estate want to change the subject from office. Yeah. <laughs> they want to get, and they're like, how about data centers? But I mean, to be fair, it is growing very quickly. I do wonder though, with so much capital chasing it, whether the returns are still going to be there. Yes, very much so. Why? It's the same reason you see the movement of the stock price of NVIDIA and anything AI related. The voracious appetite for this new technology or the advancing of the technology is ginormous. So the capital first goes through a funnel. First it goes to those companies. First it goes to creating those chips, et cetera, et cetera. Then comes the need real estate wise for the data centers and the storage. So that's really only begun. And in fact, in real estate, it's actually the opposite. Even though there's so much interest from real estate investors for data centers, they're sort of afraid of it. They don't understand it. They hesitate about it. And then I'd say last but not least is the scale. You know, we had one project that we're doing in Madrid. The original budget was on the same piece of land was to develop 400 million euros worth of spending for the development on the same property because of the demand from our potential tenant for the same site, it's going to be about a 2.6, 2.7 billion euro project on the same piece of land. Just because they are, they're just doing so much more there. And into, so much demand, I from, see. particularly from the FANGs. There's about 14 tenants out there that are the most voracious users, but it's everybody that you're talking about all day long that's cloud related, that's cloud security related, that's chip related. They're the ones creating the demand. But, but with, with, you know, obviously the cost of capital having been, is a lot higher now than it was. With 10-year money, what, 5 6% at least. Aren't cap rates going up a lot too on these things? Um, what it is is what we like to do is play where the growth is and focus where the growth is. I think what people don't realize when you invest in a market like, let's say, the office market, is you've got a market where the fundamentals, the rents are coming down and your costs are going up. At least what's exciting in terms of the data center side of the world is that, yes, your costs are going up, but the demand is voracious. And you look at it also from a global point of view. We're, one of the things I said, actually, on, I think on your show a lot of years ago, I said one day you're going to see in this bipolar separation of the world, you're going to see an Amazon stop doing business in a Russia. And I say, who knows, maybe one day you might see Apple not being able to do business in a China. What that means is that separation is now there's a race to bring those chip jobs home and accelerate those manufacturing of chips for that sort of race that creates more data center needs. So the bottom line of all that means demand more and more for rent makes up for the greater cost of the real estate. Just need to find the real estate investors that are willing to plunge into something that's not traditional real estate, but also has the technology bent to it, which is not sort of those wheeler dealer types. No, but I mean, you're talking about it like it's a newfound thing. I mean, Blackstone, I think it's their largest single component of what is the largest real estate portfolio there is. It's not like data center investment has not been going on for some time. No, they only pivoted to that space about 10, 10 or 14 years ago. Um, before 14 years ago, they weren't. And what's amazing about Blackstone, particularly John Gray, is they're the pioneer. So yes, they're doing it, but there's not a lot of people that have the size of checkbook to be able to write a check for a $2.6 billion project, as that's just one project I gave you an example of. Another project we're looking at is about $4.7, $4.750 billion. And there's such a limited amount of investors that have that checkbook ability to be able to put it out. So yes, what Blackstone is ahead of the curve, they've sort of always been ahead of the curve. I really respect them greatly. I'm an investor. I'm a big uh, fan and regular friend of uh, the senior team up there. But there's not a lot of other capital that's chasing it to the degree they are. So still a humongous market, humongous opportunity, right. and a dearth. Of